Hi boys, it's Wednesday evening and I'm going to read you a story about Persnickety. Can you say that name? Persnickety. Looks like a dragon to me. Let's see what he does, okay? Once in a land of magic mountains and dreams, there lived some mighty dragons in a shadowy valley called Old Dragon Hollow. Here the dragons lived deep in a cave carved from crystal coal. Here they hid from idle passers-by who might have laughed, leered, or jumped in fear of the mighty dragons that lived in Old Dragon Hollow. The dragons really couldn't scare anyone, <clears throat> for if you looked very carefully, you would note that all the dragons wore woolly socks upon their feet to keep their to toes warm on those cold, cold crystal cave nights. Nothing is very scary about a dragon who wears socks. <coughs> Excuse me, boy. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Not all of the dragons were sloppy. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. <coughs> okay, I'm going to keep going, boys. <coughs> Not all of the dragons were sloppy, for one of the dragons was a clean, as clean as clean could be, and he was called Persnickety. His shiny green scales were combed and oiled to a shiny sheen. His face was scrubbed until it nearly glowed. Around his neck, he wore a perfectly tied bow tie, always clean, always neat, always tied, and on his feet, he always wore a clean pair of checkered iron socks. Persnickety spent most of his days trying to clean up after the other dragons. With an armful of dirty socks, he would waddle to the stream to wash them all as the other dragons ate another messy meal of grease, glop, and bones. Mm. Look at those socks. Now, it wasn't that the other dragons didn't appreciate the things that Persnickety did. It was just that they didn't care if things were messy or not. And if they were to choose, they preferred messy more. One day, the little pristine dragon became very angry. That's it, he cried as he threw down a pile of rubbish. I'll wash not another sock. I will pick up nary another bone. If all of you wish to act like pigs, then you should like live like them too. Gee, thanks, Persnickety, they all shouted in glee as they began throwing food at one another. We're just as happy dirty as you are clean. Well, Persnickety exclaimed, if that's the way you feel, then I'm moving far away, far away indeed. The other dragons thought about it a moment or two and then chorused, okay, and went back to their food fight. Look at Persnickety's face. He's pretty upset. The others were having a food fight. We don't do that, do we, boys? Persnickety rushed into the cave and carefully packed all of his belongings. He packed his ties, several handkerchiefs with his initials stitched on the side, all of his checkered stockings, his toothbrush, and his favorite bar of soap. After all was packed, he natally washed his hands and face, put on a clean pair of socks, picked up his bag, and carefully stepped around the sleeping dragons. The wind whispered cleanly through the trees as Persnickety walked away from Old Dragon Hollow and into the valley of streams and dreams. Would you like to have Persnickety as a pet? <clears throat> oh, what a delightful valley, he shouted in glee as he walked beside the crystal waters of the stream. It's all so <coughs> neat and clean. Oh, and it is so perfect. Persnickety walked and walked, looking at all the perfection around him. He stopped to smell some bright red roses, but as he touched the stem of the rose, a thorn pricked his finger. Hmm, he thought, it's pretty perfect, but not perfect enough. When I build my perfect little house, I shall pluck all the thorns from those roses, and then they'll be perfect too. But all was not perfect, for Persnickety had no one to admire all his perfection. He mopped about the meadow, he moped about the meadow, and finally came up with a marvelous plan. I shall throw a perfect party. I'll invite all the dragons from Old Dragon Hollow, and then they shall see how perfect a clean life can be. He dashed inside, neatly wrote an invitation to all the dragons. Then he rushed about making perfect sandwiches and a perfect cake for the perfect party. When all was done and set neatly on the table, he slipped into his bed with its crispy iron sheets and tightly tucked blankets and fell into a perfect sleep and dreamed of clean and folded things. Looks pretty perfect, huh, boys? 
The next day, like a rumbling summer storm, all the dragons rambled into the valley of streams and dreams. They rollicked and frolicked and had just a delightful time throwing food and draping their, spot, their socks all over the house. They wrestled on the floor, ate all the food or threw it, and burped in great gales of laughter. All in all, the dragons had a perfect party. All of them, that is, except Persnickety, who rushed about picking up all that they threw down. Wipe your feet, use a napkin, don't touch, don't look, just don't. Persnickety shouted as he rushed from one end of the house to the other and cleaned all the spills they were, that, they were, that they had made. Now that the party was over, the dragons put back on their oddly matched soiled socks and rolled like a dust storm back to their home in Old Dragon Hollow. They left behind a monstrous mess. Everywhere Persnickety looked, there was no perfection. His bed was tossed and turned. There was jam and jelly stuck to the ceiling. Why, there was even a dirty sock draped about the leftover cake. With grim resolve never to have a party again, Persnickety began to clean up the mess. Poor Persnickety. He was trying so hard. He cleaned and cleaned all through the night, buffing and shining everything bright. Then at first morning's light, he stepped outside and looked at, one, at his once again perfect house. But all was not perfect, for the roses had grown so perfectly, grown so perfectly, were torn and trampled down. Persnickety sat down with a thump and a puff of dust. With a small trickling tear sliding down his cheek, he picked up a tattered rose. He stifled a sob as he looked and looked at the tattered rose, but the more he thought about the party, the more he found perfection in all the mess. He began to giggle as he realized that perfection is only perfection if you have something to compare it to. What better to compare it to, to a perfect house than the dragon's perfect mess? See his rose? It's all trampled. He laughed and laughed as he swept up the flowers. The party was perfect in a dusty, dirty sort of way. Those dragons are sort of perfect. The roses would have lived if I had only left on the thorns. With that, he dashed about his garden and carefully taped a thorn onto every bush. <laughs> From that day forward, Persnickety threw a party once a year and all the dragons came just as messy as could be. They ate and threw the food, they jumped upon the bed, but they never ate the roses, the roses bright, bright red. For the stem of every rose was gaily adorned with perfect thorns that made each flower even more perfect. Perfectly perfect is good, or so the story goes, but nature left all on her own will make a perfect rose. Boys, what can you learn from this story? I go back to the same thing we talk to you about all the time. Be who God meant you to be and you'll set the world on fire. So Persnickety needed to be the way Persnickety was and the dragons needed to be the way they were, but they needed to appreciate and respect one another. They were very different, weren't they? And nature, Mother Nature took care of the roses. I just picked some the other day for our chapel and they had big thorns on them, but they needed to be on those roses to protect them so they could be so beautiful. So. Enjoy the flowers, enjoy Mother Nature, and have a good night's sleep tonight. I love you very much, honeys. God bless.